I don't want to talk about it, just kind of the idea of the general senses, and that really, like I said, involves the tactile system. Uh, this is obviously going back from the sense organs up through the spinal cord on those afferent nerves up to that somatosensory cortex. Some of this develops very early on in life, and uh, one of the things we'll see, there tends to be really long axons on these ones, and our sensation tends to get better as more and more of that myelination is completed during development. Uh, when we get to the brain, you'll see that it's really, there's this little channel right here in between. This is this first raised area on the back side of this, what is called the central canal or central sulcus. This is going to be this post-central gyrus, and we'll see on both sides of the cerebrum, this is where uh, really that touch sense is decoded in the brain. Uh, it is all mapped out, and we'll see this, and we'll talk about it more in AMP2 at the beginning here. But uh, this is what they refer to as the homunculus, the motor, as well as the somatosensory strip. These are really been all mapped out on both sides of the brain, kind of going from the center out, sensation on these ones, and it would be the same on the flip side of that, or the that was the left side of the brain to be the same on the right side of the brain. And the motor area is actually on the precentral gyrus, so just on the other side of that sulcus. So we're going to see the sense of touch is technically not just one type of receptor. We're going to see we actually have multiple types of receptors. So we're going to have pressure, touch, uh, temperature. Or there's going to be a number of different these types of uh, receptors that are allowing us to have what we would refer to as our sense of touch or our tactile sense. So one of these is pressure receptors. Uh, these detect like mechanical pressure on the actual receptor. Uh, some of them have differences in how quickly they can adapt. Uh, and we're going to see the space in these is really going to have a role in how sensitive that area of the body is. Uh, so we really have, in terms of pressure and touch receptors that are just true, the mechanical receptors like that, there's really three main types. We have free nerve endings that go up into that epithelial tissue. These are very light touch and pressure. Uh, in the upper parts of the dermis, we have what are called Meisner's corpuscles. Uh, these defect, detect more of like a light touch, something like this. And then deeper down in the, uh, the dermis, you're going to have what are called Piscinian corpuscles. These ones detect more of that kind of squeezing pressure, that heavier pressure. And you can kind of see them here. Like I said, the free nerve endings going up into that epithelial tissue. You can see the Meisner's corpuscles up in the upper parts of that dermis and the Piscinian like I said, much deeper. And different gradations are going to be different thresholds a lot of times on these. So some Piscinian corpuscles might have a little bit of pressure, or other ones you might really need to squeeze them to activate them so you can get some of that differences in sensation by doing some of that. The other thing we're going to see is a lot of times when you think about the skin, you think about also being receptive to temperatures. These are actually different receptors than the pressure and touch receptors. We have what are we refer to as kind of what I would call warm and cool receptors. Uh, the warm receptors, like it says here, kind of in this middle ground of in the 70s to a little over 100 Fahrenheit. Uh, they're going to be sensitive in that range. The cold receptors, which like I said, being up north here, are more of cool receptors. Uh, they're kind of in between that 10 degrees Celsius and 20 degrees Celsius. Generally, what we're going to activate outside of those ranges are going to be pain receptors. So at temperatures beneath 10 degrees Celsius, you're going to start activating pain receptors. Uh, ones above that, you're also above the 45 degrees, you're going to also start activating pain receptors. And this is part of the reason sometimes if you've ever been out in the cold and you come back in and it feels really warm, like if you put your hand under water, it feels almost burning hot, even though it's not hot water if you touch it to like your elbow. This has to do with kind of these pain and cold receptors. A lot of times, if you've been out in the really cold, you've activated pain receptors, then you give them some type of context with a warm temperature, you're gonna get this sensation of burning hot. Uh, if you were to actually take two like copper pipes and wrap them around each other, and one you had ice cold water, and the other one you had warm water, and you grabbed them, they'd feel burning hot to you. And the main reason for that is, is the ice cold is gonna activate pain receptors, where the lukewarm is gonna activate warm receptors and if you have pain and warmth as really the context your brain is working off of, you're going to feel that it's burning hot even though it isn't. Uh, so that is part of the reason every once in a while you feel some of these weird 
sensations. Uh, the sense of pain is also part of this. These are generally just free nerve endings that are in the tissues. Uh, we find them everywhere in the body with the exception of the nervous tissue in the brain. Uh, and again, damage, lack of oxygen, extremes in temperature, these are all things that would activate these pain receptors. And a lot of times, uh, depending on where you're at, especially visceral pain, we don't localize it particularly well. And in either way, we don't, these don't adapt, which is part of the reason people can have chronic pain. If these did do sensory adaptation, there'd be no such thing as chronic pain because if it was a continuous level of pain, you would stop sensing it, which is not the case. Uh, sometimes you also get what is called referred pain, and this is a lot of times with visceral pain. Uh, certain sensory signals from viscera, they are perceived as coming from somewhere else, and we actually get them on the get them perceived as being on the skin somewhere, and it's really because certain tracts are very close and house both visceral and cutaneous ones there, and sometimes you will get a little cross signal going on here. Uh, so we actually localize it incorrectly, which is part of the reason that sometimes you can get this referred pain. So if you've ever had like heart pain, a lot of times we feel it in the shoulder and the right arm, kidney and ureter pain, you feel it more in the groin, uh, bladder pain sometimes is in the middle of the, the buttocks. So this is kind of showing some of these ideas here where liver and gallbladder, even though it should be down here in the abdomen, sometimes you feel it in the right shoulder. Heart is actually right here, but we feel it in the left arm and down the left arm a little bit. So that is just something to be aware of, this idea of referred pain. I'm not going to be crazy testing you out about all the sites of where referred pain happens, but understand what it is. Uh, and again, when it comes to dealing with a lot of these, it is going to go up through the thalamus, and that is that kind of sorting or that relay area of the brain. It is then going to send it to that particular cerebral cortex area that is going to really judge what's going on with the pain, where is it at, and what should we do about it? Should we be upset? Should we cry? Do we need to do something to move away from this pain? These are all the things that that cerebral cortex is going to process and determine what to do about a pain response. Uh, last set of these uh, kind of general sense receptors are going to be proprioceptors. These are ones that are actually looking at body position and tensions and muscles and tendons. So you have what are called the muscle spindle as well as the Golgi tendon organs and you can see a picture of each of these here. You can kind of see in this one here these wrap around these particular fibers. How contracted they are is going to send a signal on these ones by squeezing those closer together or not. Same thing with this Golgi tendon organ here. If there's more tension it's going to pull apart that kind of organ area here and you will send a signal. If you've ever had exertional muscle cramps, a lot of times it is a disconnect between these two types of proprioceptors. They fatigue at different rates and you start getting kind of disconnecting signals that are not, when the muscle's contracting, you should be saying that here and this should also show increased tension because they kind of uh, fatigue at different rates. Sometimes you'll get a disconnecting signal and if you've ever, like for myself, I've ran enough that you'll get calf cramps where your calf will just try to lock up on it. That is actually a nervous system response to having mis misaligned signals on these ones. Where this one's saying it's contracted, this one's saying it's not, let's say, and the muscle will contract just to make sure that it doesn't do damage. And to be honest with you, it really sucks, they hurt. So that is kind of the general senses. So what we'll be working on next is we'll start going through a number of these different special senses, starting with taste and smell and then working through kind of hearing, sight, and the vestibular senses, which is our kind of sense of equilibrium. So I will see you next time.